In this video, we will review inorganic compounds that are essential to human functioning. We'll start with a comparison of inorganic and organic compounds. An inorganic compound is a substance that does not contain both carbon and hydrogen. Many of our inorganic compounds do contain hydrogen atoms, such as water and hydrochloric acid that's produced by the stomach. But there are only a handful of inorganic compounds that contain carbon atoms. Inorganic compounds are often connected by an ionic bond. Common inorganic compounds include salts, water, acid bases, and then an example of a carbon-containing inorganic compound is carbon dioxide. In contrast, organic compounds contain both carbon and hydrogen. These compounds are synthesized via covalent bonds. Organic compounds include carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, which are all found on pizza, which must mean pizza is the perfect food. Up to 70% of an adult's body weight is made of water. This includes the water found inside the cells, or the intracellular fluid, and the water found outside of the cells, or the extracellular fluid. Within the body, water has many functions. Water serves as a lubricant and a cushion within the body. For example, in our joints, we have synovial fluid, where water helps to protect the actions of our joints. In our pleural cavity, the pleural fluid helps the lungs to expand and recoil as we breathe in and out. It also protects our cells and organs from physical trauma, such as the cerebral spinal fluid within our skull that helps protect the brain. Water serves as a heat sink where it can absorb and dissipate heat without increasing that body temperature. For example, water will absorb heat um, when it is hot outside. It will redirect blood flow to help keep us cool. And water is released from our sweat glands where it can evaporate in the air and carry that heat, thus cooling that part of the body. And then water works as a solvent for our body's chemical reactions. Remember that water molecules are polar, and so they have regions of positive and negative electrical charge. Because of this, water will readily dissolve ionic compounds and any polar covalent compounds. These are our hydrophilic or water-loving compounds. For example, in water, it will dissolve salt or sodium chloride. An important thing to remember is that when we talk about clinical laboratory values, when we say a sodium level, we're really talking about concentrations in the blood. So you can see in this chart of some common laboratory values that the clinical value of sodium is really the concentration of sodium in the blood as it's measured in milliequivalents per liter, which is a concentration. Similarly, our blood glucose is measured in milligrams per deciliter. But we'll always check the units because some things are measured in other units. For example, our hemoglobin A1C is in a percent. Let's look at the role of water in chemical reactions. And we're going to talk about two types of chemical reactions that involve the creation of water or dehydration synthesis and the consumption of water or hydrolysis. In dehydration synthesis, one reactant gives up an atom of hydrogen, so a monomer here, monomer two, and then another reactant gives up a hydroxyl group, or monomer one, when you're synthesizing a new product. In the formation of the covalent bond, this water molecule is released as a byproduct. And so you can see again, by giving up a hydroxyl group and a hydrogen, then water is created and these monomers now have a covalent bond. This is also called a condensation reaction. Another type of reaction is hydrolysis. Here, a, a molecule of water will disrupt a compound, breaking its bond. 
and the water is then split into the hydrogen and hydroxyl group. So you can see we have a covalent bond with these two reactants. Water comes in and breaks up that bond. And in that process, the water is broken into that hydroxyl group and a hydrogen. These dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis reactions are reversible, and they're an important part of the chemistry of organic compounds. We also have salts. So a salt is a substance that when it's dissolved into water, it dissociates into ions other than uh, hydrogen and hydroxide. So in this example here, we have salt crystals. When it is dissolved in water, it doesn't dissociate into molecules of NaCl, but it's going to have sodium cations, so positively charged ions that's surrounded by water molecules, and chloride anions, or um, negatively charged molecules that are surrounded by water. Our acid bases are important parts of body chemistry. These are substances that dissociate in water into electrolytes. Acids and bases can change the properties of solutions when they're dissolved. So an acid is a substance that releases hydrogen ions in solution. Because an atom of hydrogen has just one proton and one electron, a positively charged hydron a positively charged hydrogen ion is simply called a proton. And this proton is highly likely to then participate in chemical reactions. So if you have a strong acid, these compounds will release all of their protons in solution, where they completely ionize. An example of that is hydrochloric acid in the stomach. If you have a weak acid, it does not ionize completely. So some of the hydrogen ions will remain bonded onto that compound. Some examples of weak acids are vinegar or acetic acid. A base is a substance that releases hydroxyl ions in solution, or one that accepts protons that are already in solution. So the hydroxyl ions uh, or other substances can combine with the hydrogen ion uh, to form a water molecule. And so then that can remove the hydrogen ion and reduce that acidity. So a strong base will release most or all of their hydroxyl ions, uh, and a weak base will release only some. An example of a base would be something like bicarbonate, which would be things like baking soda or are found in Tums and other medications. So when we talk about acid bases, we have to talk about the pH. So the relative acidity or alkalinity or, uh, for a base uh, of a solution would be measured with its pH. So you can see the pH scale goes from zero to a very strong acid, like battery acid or hydrochloric acid, all the way up to 14, which is a strong base like drain cleaner. The closer you are to neutral, or around seven, the closer, the more safe it is for a human. So our pH of blood is 7.4. So things that we tend to tolerate well would be things like uh, milk or maybe black coffee, um, but people find things like grapefruit juice or lemon juice a little more acidic for them. Uh, Seawater is a little bit alkaline. Baking soda is something people use um, when they're feeling like their stomach's too acidic, but then when you get into things like ammonia and bleach, those can start to be harmful. And then we'll look at buffers. So a buffer um, is a solution uh, of a weak acid and its conjugate base. And so in our blood, the human pH ranges from 7.35 to 7.45. And all the cells of our body depend on homeostatic regulation of this balance. 
So when you have a buffer, it can neutralize small amounts of acids or bases in body fluids, thus helping to protect our cells from damage uh, when there are uh, swings in pH. So that's a brief overview of inorganic compounds in the human body.